Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral and Bethlehem Chapel on this Monday in Holy Week. My name is Patrick Kieser and it's my pleasure to join with you today for this service of prayer. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into his glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. From Psalm 36. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of the proud come near me, nor the hand of the wicked push me aside. Our reading today comes from the Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. Our experience of the joy of Easter and the celebration of the resurrection is made all the more powerful by the preparation and attention we give to these days of Holy Week. While emphasis is rightly placed on Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, leading to the celebration of the Great Vigil of Easter, these weekdays of Holy Week are critical for the journey as well. This week we go with Jesus toward the cross but we will note from the reading appointed for this day that the journey is not intended to be a historical reenactment of the days preceding Jesus' betrayal and crucifixion. In other words, the intention is not a one-to-one -one correspondence, an exact correspondence between today and what Jesus did on the equivalent Monday of that week. This reading from John 12 makes that point immediately clear in the opening verse. Six days before Passover would have been Saturday in the chronology of John. The point is made even clearer by the fact that this passage we've just heard is immediately followed by Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem with palms and shouts of Hosanna. The focus then is less historical reenactment and more preparation. 
a theme clearly revealed in this text from John 12. Jesus is in the home of his friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. This scene immediately follows the dramatic raising of Lazarus told in the long 11th chapter of John. And we might note some tension or contrast between G Lazarus's recent resurrection and Jesus's impending crucifixion and death. Mary seems to be aware of the gravity of what awaits, and she proceeds to anoint Jesus with a precious and costly perfume, wiping his feet with her hair. The fragrance of the perfume fills the room, and we might imagine that some discomfort also fills that room as others witness what must have been a tender and intimate encounter between Mary and Jesus. Judas, the one who would betray him, gives voice to these concerns, questioning why the costly perfume was not sold and the money given to the poor. The text is quick to reject Judas's question as one coming from a thief who cares not for the poor but for himself. Jesus rebukes any concerns about Mary's seemingly lavish act and orders them to leave her alone. She had bought the costly perfume for his day of burial. Of course, Mary had clearly anticipated that day and anointed him now for his burial that would follow six days later when his body was laid in the tomb. We might also draw some connection with that story from Jesus' infancy, one we hear each year at the epiphany of wise men from the East coming to visit the Christ child and bringing him myrrh, a very strange gift to offer to a child, a substance that evoked anointing for burial. Mary performed a loving act of preparation, anointing and adoring the one who knew the sword of suffering that awaited him yet did not turn away from that path. He endured the shame, suffering, and ultimately death for us. And as we look ahead to our remembrance of that great mystery this Friday, we too are invited to prepare ourselves to offer our worship and adoration at the feet of the one whose love for us is so great that it defies our understanding. We approach that mystery in full on Friday. And in these days before, we are invited to preparation and reverent reflection on that wondrous love. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. With faith and love and in union with Christ, let us offer our prayer before the throne of grace. Have mercy, Lord, on your people, for whom your Son laid down his life. Bring healing and wholeness to peoples and nations, and have pity on those torn apart by division. Strengthen all who are persecuted for your name's sake and deliver them from evil. Look in mercy upon all who suffer and hear those who cry out in pain and desolation. Bring comfort to the dying and gladden their hearts with the vision of your glory. 
give rest to the departed and bring them with all your saints to glory everlasting. Now in the silence to follow, I invite your own prayers. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.